So question one, it says a uh, photon has energy five kilo electron volts. Oh, so I think this is just the, so as we were introducing quantum mechanics, we have um, introduced some quantum assumptions and uh, this is what it relates to. And um, there's a couple different ways you can get at it. Let me just uh, write down a few relationships that will be relevant in making use of the given information and getting at frequency and wavelength. So what we started actually last week with is uh, the idea of energy of a photon that um, the, the oscillate, el, oscillation of electric and magnetic fields, electromagnetic waves only come in quantized units of energy and that that unit is Planck's constant times frequency. That's what we started from. Now, it, this question asks for wavelength. When you want to find the wavelength, you can get at it through what we've talked about in the context of waves. You know, wave speed is given by frequency times wavelength. You can solve for the wavelength here and then do that. That definitely works. And in fact, maybe that's what I'll do. The other relationship that might have been useful is the, the momentum of the photon. And momentum of the photon is related to its wavelength through Planck's constant divided by wavelength. This is the de Broglie uh, hypothesis. It applies to photons. It applies to basically any particle that has momentum. Um, yeah, I, I, for this question, I feel like uh, using this is unnecessarily complicated because, well, maybe, maybe not. Uh, let me do it this way just to show. So if a photon has energy of 5 kilo electron volts, then because, um, because uh, um, for massless particle like a photon, this relationship holds. Energy of the particle with no mass is related to momentum through this relationship, momentum times C. So the momentum of a photon would be five kilo electron volt per C. This is a common unit we use for momentum of a particle like a photon. So uh, let me do it this way. I wanted to do calculation um, in mostly in sage math. I think I need to look up just the one constant um, that I don't have memorized, which is uh, Planck's constant in electron volt units. So Planck's constant, I think if I just search for Planck's constant, one of the units that they will offer is this one. So I'm going to just to program that into SageMath. Um, H is going to be equal to 4.136 times 10 to the minus 15. And I'll remember electron volt second. Good. And, uh, oh, I guess I can also do this. Uh, speed of light, I have it memorized, but I may just to use the slightly more um, uh, accurate value of 2.998. So speed of light is going to be 2.998 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Okay. So we do those programmed in. I can do the rest in Sage Math. So frequency of light, um, that's going to be um, the, so I'm going to solve this for Planck's constant. So energy of the photon divided by I'm going to solve this for frequency, so it's going to be energy of the photon divided by Planck's constant. So uh, energy of the photon, that's uh, 5 times 5,000, 5 times 10 to the power of 3 electron volt divided by Planck's constant. Remember, I have this is in units of electron volt a second. So 5,000 electron volt divided by something that has a unit of electron time, electron volt times a second, I'll get a unit of one over a second, which I can convince is hertz. So that's, uh, oh yeah, scientific notation. So 1.21 times 10 to the power of 18. That sounds about right. Uh, so that's uh, um, higher than frequency of visible light and five kilo electron volt. That's like a X-ray uh, photon, I think. Um, okay, let me work out the wavelength. So 
I'm going to work in this uh, uh, momentum. So momentum of the photon is 5 kilo electron volt per C. So that's momentum. So for wavelength, just in my head, solving this, uh, or let me just write it out so that I don't have to do it in my head. So solving this out for wavelength, wavelength is Planck's constant divided by the momentum. So, or it will be Planck's constant divided by energy of the photon divided by C. So, uh, Planck's constant divided by energy of the photon, 5 times 10 to the power of 3 um, electron volts, um, and then divided by C uh, meters per second. And I, I guess I will just trust that unit two will <laughs> work out so that I have unit of uh, meters for uh, wavelength. So that's a two point. So, so since I need the answer in nanometers, let me multiply this. This underscore, it's the uh, Sage method notation for previous output. So previous output times 10 to the power of nine. That will give me answer in nanometers. So 0 0.248 uh, nanometers. Yeah, that's pretty short wavelength. That's like, again, uh, X-ray level. So simple-ish number plugging in exercise. Let me move on to the next question. Okay, good. Um, so the next question asks, what is the momentum of the uh, a microwave photo. So let me just uh, um, let me just erase some of the stuff, but keep the some of the relationships that will be useful here. The relationship that I feel will be useful is the it's the De Broglie relationship because it uh, directly relates momentum to wavelength. So in this question, we are given the wavelength of the photon in centimeters. So for the momentum, all we have to do is solve this relationship for the momentum. Oh wait, it is already solved for momentum. So just plug in the numbers, Planck's constant and divide it by lambda. Now, what we do have to be careful is that um, we have Planck's constant in the Unit to, so you know if we look at the units here, our Planck's constant is in unit of electron volt times a second, and when we divide by the wavelength, let's say we convert it to meters, so we are dividing by meter, so we are getting um, um, a number in the unit of electron volt times a second per meter. Uh, the question wants the answer in basic SI units. So what we are going to have to do is to do a unit conversion from electron volt to unit to, uh, to the unit of joule, to basic SI unit. Then, um, then the rest of the unit will work out so that it gives us kilogram, meter per second. I do happen to have this memorized. One electron volt, because it's related to the elementary charge, it's going to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joule. So uh, I will do that conversion after I plug in some of the numbers so that I have the final answer in the basic SI unit. So um, so my Planck's constant, I'll keep using the, uh, so let me do this here. So I'll keep using the uh, value I programmed in for Planck's constant in the unit of electron volt per second, or sorry, electron volt times second. Uh, so Planck's constant divided by the wavelength, I'm gonna convert centimeters to meters, so 0 0.045 meters, that'll give me an answer that's gonna be in the unit of electron volt times the second per meter. So let me multiply that, uh, previous output times uh, 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19, so that it's in um, basic SI unit. Uh, 1.6 times uh, 10 to the power of minus 19, so, that's the answer, super small. Um, let's hope it's correct. 1.47 times 10 to the power of minus 32. 1.47 times 10 to the power. Yeah, it's a super uh, small number. It's, 
<laughs> That's one of the reasons the electron volt unit makes a lot of sense in the realm of quantum mechanics, so that our numbers are more reasonable. This super tiny number, it just makes all the numbers out of whack. Like, I have no sense of intuition for what this kind of momentum is. But in the unit of electron volts per C, I do have a little bit better sense of uh, intuition. And, and that's the context where I think, I hope you will develop your own number sense as well. But in with the SI units, it's hopeless. <laughs> so I don't try. Um,